Welcome back to The Social Regressive, y'all. At the CMMG Media Day, I got to shoot a representative of pretty much everything in the CMMG catalog. That was the uh, little AR pistols called the Banshee. You have your carbines called the Resolute. And then you get up into the Endeavors. Those are gonna be your longer, heavier precision rifles. That could be AR-15s or AR-10s. They have uh, what I believe is the most chamberings of any AR manufacturer out there. They have everything from 4.6 by 30 up through all kinds of other pistol calibers, 9mm, 45 ACP, 10mm, uh, and then you get up into your standard carbine sort of setups like 5.56 by 45. You get into 6mm arc, 6.5 Grendel, uh, 308 Winchester, 6.5 Creedmoor. They have all kinds of options out there and in all different kinds of sizes. But then also remember that they have a couple of kind of oddball setups. They have the Mark 47, which is a kind of a blend of an AR-10, AR-15, and AK-47. You take the best bits from all of those, put them all into one little package, and the Mark 47 is just some kind of freak. It is really the ultimate 7.62 by 39 launcher. One more that they've added recently is the Descent. That's the one that is the bufferless system. Instead of having a buffer and buffer tube, and having to use the standard stocks at the back. Uh, this is going to be a folding design. Uh, you can actually kind of fold your stock away because there's nothing needed back there. Instead, you have guide rods up at the top of the action. And yeah, everything is just kind of encapsulated in there and it really does work well. Now I'm gonna talk about each of these in their own individual breakout videos. But in this one, I wanted to talk about one part in particular, one of the smaller parts that's on here. And it's a part that's on every single one of their models. That's going to be everything from their tiny chamberings, their pistol chamberings, up through their big stuff. This is the muzzle brake that they've had on all of their rifles and pistols forever. Uh, this is a single chamber design. It has two extra little chambers right here for venting gas upward. And that's gonna help to reduce your muzzle climb. And this is a very effective little muzzle brake. I've used this on everything from 5 point, or excuse me, 5.7 by 28, uh, 5.56 by 45 through 350 Legend that you see right here, up through 308. It's a great little brake. It works really well at taming recoil and maintaining a very small profile. Uh, you can see that this is really just about the same size as the old A2 flash hider, not much bigger and not much heavier as well. Uh, so this is one that I would recommend to anybody but they've made a change. They have a new model now that's going to be even more effective than this one. Uh, it takes a lot of its design cues from probably the most effective slimline brake that's out there. The Ultradyne Apollo series, these are freaks. Uh, instead of having your kind of flat chamber area in here, this is going to blast gases back at a pretty severe angle. So you're going to get, yeah, a lot of uh, gases venting roughly back at a 45 degree angle away from you uh, off to your sides. And this is going to mean just almost no recoil at all. We tried this on their 6.5 Creedmoor model and the gun just barely moves. Uh, I know it's kind of a big rifle to begin with, but still this made a pretty big difference over the, the standard CMMG brake that you see here. Well, the new model is going to kind of split between these two. It takes a lot of the cues from this Ultradyne brake and keeps them in a small package like you see right here. So it's going to have uh, two chambers now that are smaller and that have this kind of angled setup where the gases come more backward than out to the sides. And just in my own, you know, kind of feel, my own testing while we were out shooting, it seemed to be more effective. And you can actually judge for yourself. I'm gonna put two videos side by side here. One of these is the original CMMG brake with that single chamber, and it's attached to essentially the same full auto Mark 47 as this other one that's using the new design. And I want you to see if there's any difference in uh, the recoil that we're getting. Now, both of these were completely manageable. They were both a lot of fun, but I felt that the new model that we tested at this recent media day was more manageable and I could see it actually in others in some ways more than myself. Uh, I could see that it was just very easy to keep on target while I was firing but then I could see others that came up and shot 
and it looked like it just really wanted to stay on target. And some of the ways that it does this is, you know, first off, you do have those two chambers and, you know, kind of that angled vent coming back, but you also have slightly larger upper chambers up here, uh, these ports that blast gas upward and help to keep the muzzle climb down. And yeah, the Mark 47 was just a, a breeze to shoot. It was really easy, even with all the recoil that you're gonna be getting from a 123 grain bullet coming out of there. The new brake seems to be available for everything. So that's going to be for your uh, 223 size chambering. So that's gonna be things like, you know, the 4.6 by 30, 5.7 by 28, up through your 5.56 and that sort of thing. But then they also have them stepping up in size based on whatever caliber you're gonna have. So if you have a nine millimeter Banshee, then you're going to be using one like this. This is a, a 350 Legend Resolute that you see here, but they're gonna have that new model for your nine millimeters as well. So that's gonna be 355. It'll be for 350 Legend, nine millimeter, and then you're going to have a 45 size. So that's gonna be for your 45 ACP. Uh, if you have a 450 Bushmaster or 458 SOCOM, you can uh, put it on there. There's a 264 size, that's gonna be your 6.5s. And if you have a six millimeter arc, it's gonna be good for that as well. And then you have 308. So if you have 308 Winchester or something else that's kind of in that area, then you have one for that. And so what that's going to mean is that you can tune your brake, you can kind of pick one specifically for your chambering and get the most effectiveness out of it. If you have a uh, 556 and you've dropped like a 308 size one on there, it's not gonna be quite as effective as if you have you know more of that surface area in there. Each one of them is going to be salt bath nitrided, I believe. It's gonna be a lot like the Ultradyne. It just looks a whole lot like this. Uh, very smooth finish. It should reject any kind of corrosion that you might get into. Um, uh, in all the ones that I've tested over the years, uh, really the only thing that happens is copper might pile up on some of the flat surfaces and you have to clean it out. Not bad. Uh, these really just do not go bad. They don't rust or anything as far as I can tell. Uh, they just keep on ticking and they seem to be really tough. There are some drawbacks to this. So before you uh, go out and buy one, and I think they're gonna be about 100 bucks each, no matter what size you get. Uh, and like if you get a 308, it's gonna be 5.8s five eight, um, five by 24 uh, thread pitch. Um, so yeah, you have, make sure that you match up the thread pitch. And each of these, like I say, is gonna be about 100 bucks. Uh, but before you buy one, I want you to keep in mind a couple things. Uh, it is going to be more effective and it's going to keep that small profile, be very small out on this end, but it's also going to be pretty darn loud. I noticed that uh, when shooting, it was louder than it was with this one, at least that's how it seemed to me. And it just seemed to you know, cut through my hearing protection more than normal. And then especially for somebody that's off at a 45 degree angle away from you, like your buddy that might be helping you as a spotter, it's gonna hit him really hard. So you may wanna consider doubling up or increasing your hearing protection if you're going to use one of those. Uh, because, uh, you know, to be quite honest, when I was shooting the Mark 47, that full auto, somewhere between that short barrel, the more effective muzzle brake, and just kind of being closer to everything with my face and multiple rounds over time, it's been about two weeks since I went to that event and my ears are still ringing. Uh, it was really, really loud. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna need to do something to protect your hearing if you buy one of these. You're gonna get more blast, you're gonna get more gases coming back and you know blowing things off tables or whatever. And then you also have those two vents up at the top. Just keep in mind that sometimes those can kind of occlude your view through a scope. Now this one, has a pretty similar setup. It has these two vents that blast upward, and this has the potential to mess up your your view if you're looking through some kind of um, you know really high magnification scope if you're doing really precision work. Now myself, even with this old one where the the vents are kind of spaced close together, I didn't really notice anything. Uh, it didn't mess up my view enough to prevent me from seeing my impacts down range. But some of you purists just know that there is gas coming upward and it might you know, distort your view for an instant uh, until that dissipates. But yeah, it, in my own testing, I wasn't really able to tell. Now I have a new rifle on the way. It's gonna be in an, a Resolute. It's gonna be one of these shorter ones, but it's gonna be your AR-10 style in uh, 7.62 by 51 or 308. And so we'll see uh, if it messes up my view through the scope. Um, it's gonna have the new muzzle brake design, and yeah, we'll, we'll give it a test. 
But uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know how it works and if it might be something that's up your alley. Thanks a bunch for watching you guys and let's move on to the Banshee in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.